Hello everyone, welcome to our house in North Allerton. I hope we're on. I just hit the button. You know it's a nightmare for anybody on Facebook when it says update. And it, my, my camera said, I'm just updating, so I hope to goodness we are on here. So mm -hmm. mom will check it to make sure. Mm -hmm. We're going to sing a hymn to start off this evening. And it's one related to a thought I want to share with you. So Kathy's going to introduce this. It's a lovely hymn that in the long distant past, uh, our wonderful friends, George and Gladys Brecken used to sing. And it says, God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. So if you know it, feel free to sing along. Hey, if you don't know it, feel, feel free to sing along. Because I've been singing the wrong tune all day. So just ignore me and listen to Kathy and Jemima, okay? That's about right, Kathy. Be not dismayed. God will take care of you. there in the end. Verse 2. Through days of toil when heart doth fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fears your path assail, God will take
says this, I'm in his hands, so what am I to fear? I'm in his hands, so what am I to fear? I'm in his hands, I feel him ever near. He lights my way, he's in complete control. I'm in his hands, I'm in his hands, he guides my way. That is, that's a blessing, isn't it? I hope you enjoyed that song. Well, good, you know, and I still get, there's only one verse, but I still get it wrong. I sing, he lights my way instead of he guides. I don't know where that comes from, but it's just me, so I get it wrong. I want to just share some thoughts tonight. Kathy's going to read some verse, and there's a reason why I'm reading this tonight. Um, yesterday, I put on Facebook uh, a little message. Uh, one, well, I've been watching about the Pfizer vaccine, and... You know, they had a little bit of a breakthrough. They said it's 90%, they think, efficient. And the thing that blessed me, I've been praying since the beginning of this outbreak, all the time. I'm praying about it continually because it is such a burden to me. Kathy and I, for, for you know, have been pro-life all our lives since we met. And I mean, very much so. Uh, we were members of SPUC for quite a while, the Society for Protection of Unborn Children. And it's one of the things that we've always very, very adamant about, that life in the womb is very important. And so when I'd read about the research into vaccines that most of them, vast majority of them use a fetal line. And, and uh, so they've experimented and they've got these unborn babies that they've used. And that's disturbed us, disturbed me great, greatly. And then I discovered there were four of them that 
that don't and they don't need to it's just easier for them and so when I heard of yes with Pfizer Pfizer's got a different now there's different techniques that they use it's a totally different way they're trying to train your body to attack this thing and so there may be other things that will come out I wasn't given a, a say hey I love vaccines I don't love vaccines but what I do want to talk about for a moment today there's videos going around about these vaccines and what's going to happen and I want to just give you a word from the Lord this evening so Kathy's going to read some wonderful words from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to verse 8 and we read blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time in this you greatly rejoice Though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, stop licking me, sorry, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honour and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ whom having not seen you love though now you do not see him yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory wonderful those are some wonderful words you know many years ago there are lots of debates i was brought up in the methodist church and we were known as arminian as opposed to calvinistic and we trained with presbyterians and all sorts of arguments of whether you could lose your salvation whether you're once saved or always saved other people argued about the uh, you know if somebody committed the unpardonable sin and there were all sorts of debates that used to go on in college and and i don't really fit into any of those brackets i just know this that when i go to bed tonight I am guaranteed to wake up saved tomorrow morning. It's guaranteed. Nothing can happen to me through the night that will change my salvation status between tonight and tomorrow morning. And you know why I know that? I know that because the scripture that Kathy read, it's a scripture that is, is ingrained. It's like it's seared on my heart. And it's that verse that Kathy read in verse 5. It, it talks in verse 4 of an inheritance that's incorruptible, will not fade away. That means it can't be damaged from the outside and it can't be damaged from the inside. So nothing can harm it and nothing can take away from it. You who are kept by the power of God. Of God. You are kept by the power of of God and that's what comes into my mind I've messaged it to a few people who sent me things and sent me videos there's one going round about this lady talking about um, she talked about something from MIT in America which is a, a tattoo that can go on and a way of putting a, a vaccine in that with a dye uh, this quantum stuff and and a lot of, uh, now listen let me tell you this in the end times things will happen already in Sweden people are having implants in who are voluntarily doing it one day in the book of Revelation you'll see that that may well become compulsory but we are not there yet now listen to me we are not there yet you are kept by the power of God and so when I read a video about somebody tells me about something where you can be injected with this dye that makes you or something that makes you not human anymore I mean how stupid can we get that's a gift all of its own now listen to me and this is important I want to give you a word tonight you are protected by the power of God we are kept by God's power he is our shepherd the good shepherd do you think the good shepherd would allow a charlatan or somebody come in a wolf to come in from outside or a vet to come in from outside to take a syringe and to I've had, somebody's actually said to me that you know it'll it'll make people part robotic and they'll lose their salvation that's impossible 
It's impossible. Not because I can keep you or somebody else can keep you. It's impossible because we're kept by the power of God. Now there'll be one time when God will take us away. I believe in a rapture. I believe we will go away from this place because he's gone to prepare a place for you and me. I believe that with all my heart. But we're not there yet. There's going to come a great move of God that will bring salvation to the nations of this world. I believe that and we all have a role to play with that. But while we are waiting... There is no way on earth that will God will allow his children to come to a place where they lose that deposit that he has given to them. Impossible. There is no way that can happen because you are kept by the power of God. Now let that be written on your heart when some other idiot sends you a message on messenger or some other stupid way that things come to you where you take on these idiots and these things that try to, to involve your heart and your mind and your emotions and you're frightened by something that's going to change by you taking a vaccine or taking something else. You're kept by the power of God. You're not kept by your power or by some magician's power or by a doctor's power you're kept by the power of God now you can put that in the bank and you can deposit it and it will never change Jesus will take you home one day your inheritance it will never fade from the outside or from the inside it cannot be damaged that's what Peter's saying there and you are kept by the power of God because the good shepherd is keeping you and he's keeping me so I want to encourage you folks, those of you who listen, some of you will be watching this live, some of you will watch it later on. Please be aware we're kept by the power of God. See, you know, the complaint sometimes about men, that men are the worst at following manuals and following instructions. And I, I go along with that. Men are the worst at following instructions, except when it comes to social media and women are worst. Let me tell you why that is. Uh, you maybe disagree with me, but I get more messages from, or we get messages from women who's, who these videos and things that are sent along. Let me tell you, if I, was, if I was opening up a new product to build and I didn't look at the manual, I would, be, I would have every reason to have built it wrong. Here is the manual. It's the Word of God. And I just wish today that people would start quoting the Word of God to me more than they'll quote videos. Who the heck cares about the videos? Somebody wants to say something. They're just, okay, some of it's based on fact and it will happen in the future. We know that. We know that revelation will happen. But you are kept by the power of God. God will never, he, the king is still in the room and the king will never let his church be abused. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. Let me repeat that. It's impossible. You are kept by the power of God. So that's why we chose those hymns. Kathy chose the hymns tonight. I'm in his hands. What have I to fear? I'm in his hands. He's ever near. He lights, he guides my way. He's in complete control. I'm in his hands. I'm in his hands. And as we take communion together, this great unifying meal that we have, we are in his hands, totally secure. Mm -hmm. Secure forever. The enemy cannot take me out. You see, God will say to the wind and to the waves and to the sea, thus far and no further. There's a line he cannot cross. It's a bloodline he cannot cross. Unless I invite him in, and I've gone about that at the end of my life, there is a divine line, a bloodline that's written over my life. He is my source. That's why we don't have to worry about what's going on around us. That's why I don't have to worry about can I afford this, can I afford that. Why? Because I have a source and I'm being kept by the power of God. Kathy's going to read, Jemima's going to read. Texas is going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11. <laughs> For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Till he comes. <laughs> until he comes, we proclaim the Lord's death. You know what that Amen. means? That means we're safe till he comes. We are safe till he comes. We're secure till he comes. Your, the life, your, your hands, your future is not in, in some vaccine. It's not in Bill Gates. It's not in President Trump or, or uh, Biden or anybody else. It's not in Boris Johnson or in those other two guys who are with him every day. The scientists who know everything. It's not them. 
It's not in their hands. Our hands are, our life is, is tied up in the, in the bundle of the living God. <laughs> That's, it's wonderful. We are secure in him. And when he comes, he'll take us home. So we, we celebrate this meal again this evening till he comes. And then it won't matter after that. Of course it will for those who are left behind. And that's why we do what we do. That's why I'm going to reach the nations. We're going to get moving once again. Because people need to hear this message. And if and we're going to have no problem telling people we're nearer the end. It's not going to be a problem to understand that at the moment. Let's share together the bread. And uh, just be thankful that we're in his hands tonight. We'll eat together. Let's be thankful in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Your body was broken for us. And as we take this cup, the cup of the new covenant, his blood shed for us, we're setting him before, before us. This, this cup says we're in his hands. That's what it says. That's why they broke it from house to house in New Testament days in the book of the Acts. They, it, they're just saying to the Lord, we're in your hands. The next time we'll drink it, the next time you'll drink it, Lord will be with us in the kingdom of heaven. But until then, we're in your hands. Your blood won our salvation. It won everything that we needed. You won on the cross. When you cried, it is finished. So today we're in your hands. So we drink this together, celebrating the fact that we're in his hands in Jesus' name. Wonderful. Well, I, I went on a little bit there tonight. Shock, horror, surprise from this part of the, the world. But it's important. And I'll keep gravitating on about it night after night because it's changed our lives. I know I'm in his hands and that changes everything. Our focus changes when you know you're in his hands. When the shepherd is in charge of your life, you know that nobody coming down the road will... If anybody came near my children, they've got to come through me first. And my, and my wife, Kathy. If anybody comes towards her, they've got to get through me first. And I would die before I would let that happen. Jesus has already died. He won't let anybody touch you because you're safe, kept by the power of God. Some people to pray for this evening. I want to pray again for Dennis. Kathy's asked us this in, in Lanzarote. Dennis in hospital in France. Serious kidney disease. And tomorrow, 6 a.m., there's a biopsy on both kidneys. I want to pray, really, for Dennis in France. I want to pray for a, a one of our friends, well, two of our friends, but one over in, in uh, Quitman in, in, in uh, Texas. And Mike hasn't been well this last while. He's in hospital and they're looking after him. But because of the COVID situation, his wife and daughter are not allowed to go in. And so Charlotte and Tracy have to stay at home and just visit back and forward. But we want the God to do a miracle in, in hospital for Mike. Mike knows he's in his hands, but we're going to lift him into his presence tonight. I want to pray for, for David and Melissa as well as they're cutting over COVID there and others in the church as well. So let's continue praying. We'll continue praying for my friends in, in Alabama for Coe, who continue, he'll get his results of the biopsy this week. Pray that God will continue to bless him. And for Chad down in Louisiana, God will continue to bless him. Bless him. I will pray for you today. Pray for the American elections. It's not over yet. Pray that God will have his way in everything that happens in the USA. Man, I'm fired up tonight. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you tonight that we're in your hands. I thank you that the world is in your hands. America is in your hands. Britain is in your hands. I thank you that the church is in your hands. And that includes all of us tonight as we share together around this, this, uh, the, the body and blood of Jesus or the members of it. We thank you, Lord, for the cup and for the the bread that we share together, remembering that we're in your hands and you give everything for us. And so we rejoice in you tonight. Pray for Dennis in France. Lord, I pray particularly tomorrow morning for these biopsies on both his kidneys. God, that's a serious thing. I pray, Lord, you enter that hospital tonight. Be ready for him in the morning. And I pray, God, you'll do a mighty work. Father, a miracle for Dennis we're believing for in Jesus' name. We lift Mike into your presence in the ICU and hospital, I pray, or in the, in the ward and hospital that you will bless him. I pray you'll protect him, protect Charlotte and Tracy as they travel back and forward to see him. And God, for that foot, Lord, I pray that you'll breathe life back into his body and that, God, he will know the strength of your angels and let healing power flow from Jesus through and into him and through him tonight and raise him up in Jesus' name. I pray for David and Melissa, that, Lord, you'll raise them up with strength from this COVID, Lord, they're recovering in Jesus' name, and others the same. I pray, Lord, for Chad, that you'll continue to work through him with this 
this cancer that he has Lord that you will take him mm -hmm. through it and that Lord you'll you'll help him recover in the name of Jesus we we just bind up that cancer the, the foam of you Lord we pray you'll touch him in Jesus name and pray for Co that you'll get him through this week I pray that biopsy will be clear and you'll bless him and strengthen him and each one Lord as we join together in our homes please write on our hearts tonight God no fear no fear no fear we're not in the hands of messenger or Facebook or the media thank God we're in the hands of God and we are kept by the power of God and so I pray for each one tonight joining together write that as we go to sleep tonight later on today write it in our hearts the last thing we know we're kept by the power of God and as we wake tomorrow morning may the first thing be our lips that we are kept by the power of God and so we give you thanks and we rejoice in our salvation in Jesus name Amen you are kept by the power have I said that yet? you're kept, kept by the power of God come on say it with me in your home I am kept by the power of God one more time I am kept by the power of God so God bless you have a wonderful night and we'll be back with you tomorrow and we'll see you in your home right through we're not stopping yet so the Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus name bless you. Amen <laughs>